So I wanted to show you guys this AK-74U. This is the JM-12 or Jin Ming JM-12 AK-74U. This one's from JoeBlasterGun.com. And I've got it disassembled here. So I know I've already disassembled it, but I'm going to walk you through what I did. I, um, typically, I kind of do things like that because it's not super fun to watch me unscrew things. And also, this was the first time I've ever taken one of these apart. And I did run into an issue, so I had to check with a friend of mine from Australia who is a guru slash expert by far, Corey. So shout out to Corey, because um, there was one piece I, was, I wasn't able to get the gearbox out had an idea what it was, but he confirmed that and showed me how to do it. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's take a look at it. So the first thing you're going to do is this piece is obviously in here. There's two screws on each side right here. Okay, so you're going to remove one, two, and then one, two from the other side. Make sure you save everything, of course, and make sure that you um, take pictures even right as you go if you need to so that you remember where everything goes so once you do that you can kind of slide this off you know this piece obviously can come off and then you're going to be left with this connected to here okay so this is basically a, you're going to use a screwdriver phillips on each side because one is kind of the sleeve one is the screw going in and then you'll just unscrew those and that'll remove those will go from through here that'll let you take this piece off. Now right here where I have tape is that little spring loaded piece. Um, I just have that taped in because otherwise that piece and that spring will fall out and you don't want to lose that. Okay. So I just taped that piece in there and just kind of set these to the side. So these pieces I am probably not going to use again, um, at least initially, because I'm going to do a pretty cool custom kit that's going to let me put a different style handguard on here and so um, and that's something I've 3d printed okay so we're gonna move those things out so we've got that stuff done there so then you could go to the inside right so if you look on the inside here you can see right so these two screws hold this uh, T piece in, right? So that would be in there like this underneath those screws. If obviously, this would be on here. Okay, so you can unscrew those and you can get your T piece out. Now, if you notice, this is a pretty unique T piece, right? So my plan here was to go ahead and replace this with a metal inner barrel. Now, there's a trick to try to get these off cleanly. Soaking them in boiling water uh, typically works. Uh, in my experience, I'd say it's worked about 75% of the time. So I've done maybe, I don't know, 30, at least, you know, Gen 8 ones. And you can eventually pull this out, right, from in here. However, about 25% of the time, it doesn't, you pull it out and this, this piece actually starts to melt in the water. This piece is much stronger. And you just kind of keep stretching and then the plastic breaks here and you're almost, you're going to be screwed most likely, right? So you want to be careful doing that, especially with a unique T piece like this. I'm sure we could find some place to order one from, but I'd rather not do that. So we'll see. I might give it a try on soaking it. Sometimes I've soaked even for an additional five minutes in boiling water and that's helped. And you know, some pop off really easy, some don't. So anyway, just something to keep in mind if you're gonna to try to reuse that T piece, that's a way to try, but it's not a guaranteed way, at least in my experience. So the other thing you're gonna do when you're in here is your battery terminals are screwed in here like this, right? So there's two other screws in there as well, okay? And I've just put the screws back in just so that I don't lose them. So the red, terminal is to the front. That's something that people sometimes, um, you know, mix up when they put things together. And so I, I unscrewed those two screws. We take that out. So now, oh, the other thing we could have done first, I'm sorry, is this piece is your spring loaded piece, right? So this piece actually, and this is probably the complicated piece when you go to put it back on that people might have problems with. This goes in the top of the gearbox, 
right? So you're going to go ahead. This slides in right here into the top of the gearbox. Okay. And then this piece is right here. So that is how that works. All right. So to remove it, all you're going to do is kind of pinch this back. At least that's what I would do. Slide this forward and that comes out. That piece is catching it there. All right. So hopefully I explained that pretty well. You've got a pin right here. You're going to need to push out. That's going through holding the gearbox in. And then this is where the shot selector goes. So you can see right here is where the shot selector uh, attaches. And again, I try to just put things back in place so that I don't lose them. This top piece pops off of the selector. And then you need to unscrew this. That screw is what actually goes into there. So you go ahead and do that. Lastly, the bottom of your grip has a screw. You just unscrew it. This comes off very easily. Now the whole gearbox can slide out, right? I was told that on some AK style blasters, you may need to remove the cage. On um, this one, obviously we didn't. So this has what I've been described has been described to me as like a V3 with a motor cage. So it gives you an idea of the gearbox. Changing the spring will be super easy, right? That's going to be easy. Um, you know, obviously motors easy. Gears are what they are. Not a big fan of, the, of messing with the gears. It's just I don't have patience. But the plan is for sure to do a spring. Contemplate replacing the metal barrel. Last thing you can do here if you want for the stock, I mean the stock, just open the stock to the open position where it's clicked over here, and then you just push this pin out. The pin is what is holding it in. So that's easy if you've done any of the folding stocks before. They all pretty much work with a pin system or some sort of bolt system. Um, on this side is this piece. I removed it initially just because I wasn't sure if I needed to, but you don't. You don't need to take this off. So you can just leave that piece on there. That was just something as I was trying to figure out why the gearbox wasn't coming out. But the thing I was missing was that just because when this is on here, nice and tight, that little round cap, it looks like it's all molded into one. And so I wasn't sure I was trying to be careful. I was trying to pry things very carefully. I use a lot of like, you know, if you use a pry tool like this and you're just extra careful, you're not going to mar anything up and you're not going to hurt it. Otherwise, screwdrivers, you know, I use electric screwdriver with different Allen bits, that type of stuff. And, you know, this is actually, I just use that sometimes to push pins out, but you could use the, a lot of different things to push pins out. So hopefully that walkthrough gives you a good idea. Um, the plan I have, what I'm going to do with this, I think is going to look really cool. We're going to see. Um, I've pr printed some of the pieces and the other pieces are currently printing, but essentially I'm going to put a buffer tube stock. So I'll move the battery back there. Um, that's one thing I don't really like this battery up here and how you change it. And then I'm also going to put like a handguard more typical to like an M4 HK AR style handguard. So I think it'll look really cool and unique. And it's just something different that I haven't done before. So I like showing that stuff to you. All right. Very long video, but hopefully, I walked you through enough as to how to do this, how to get it back together. Like I said, to take pictures anytime you do any of these. I do that as well. I take pictures as I go. You know, now I have this video that can kind of walk me back through it if I feel like I am missing something. But this one wasn't too bad. Really, that's the only thing that stumped me was that piece right there. Okay. Comments, questions, post them below. Of course, this is the gelblastergun.com. This is the Jin Ming JM12 AK74U. They currently sell it for about $150, and it ships from USA, so you should get it in under a week, no problem, wherever you are. And it does have that threaded tip on there, which is pretty nice, too, if you're going to keep it stock. Comments, questions, post them below. Like, subscribe, share my channel with your friends, and participate in those monthly giveaways. Thanks.